Hi guys, we're just going to take a quick look at the software that uh, the Atlas DCA Pro uh, comes with. This is the DCA 75. I'm not entirely sure why we've got two names <laughs> on the unit, but uh, yeah, the software runs under Windows XP, uh, Vista, and uh, Windows 7. Uh, I am assuming it also runs on the 64 bit versions. Uh, and I do have a laptop here with a 64 bit version, which I will try on. Uh, another day. Um, the software, as I mentioned, is included on the little USB uh, memory stick uh, that um, comes with the equipment and uh, probably this is updated from time to time. Well, sorry, it is definitely updated from time to time. So probably the easiest thing to do is to just visit Peak, Elo Peak Electronics website for the latest uh, software version and the latest firmware version uh, for the DCA75. So uh, we're just going to have a look at the uh, website now and uh, it's uh, peakelec.co.uk uh, but just type in Peak Electronics as a search and uh, you should find that uh, without any problems. Uh, if you just click on uh, latest software and firmware and then you can download it directly uh, from their website. Um, <clears throat> the package includes the latest PC software and firmware. It also includes the Microsoft.NET framework uh, which is uh, required I think for uh, Windows XP. So we'll just download this uh, now. I should have done this before, I should have, would have saved a few seconds, but not to worry. I'll link into the uh, the review I did uh, earlier on, that's just processing on YouTube at the moment, and uh, uh, should be uh, sorted soon. It's about 3 gig unfortunately, so it does take uh, a little while for um, YouTube to process that. Right, we're just going to go to the desktop and there's the setup file. As usual um, with most OS's you're going to need to go to right click on it and go to properties and unblock and then OK and now right click and run as administrator uh, depending on again which operating system you're using. <clears throat> it is important not to have connected the DCA75 at this stage so if you have connected it unplug it immediately and uh, we'll just click on next click on I accept the agreement click on next click on next again and again and click on install This is installing the device driver, so when you do plug it in for the first time, Windows will have the correct driver there and uh, will install it and set it up correctly for you. Just click on finish and finish again. Right at this point, you can click on. Uh, sorry, you can plug the equipment in. So I am just going to plug that in here. I've got the lead all ready to go. That's it, that's plugged in. As soon as you plug it in, the meter automatically turns on and comes up with no component detected. So I'm just going to run the software now, double click on that. <clears throat> okay, so um, because my meter was sent out uh, end of December, I think, which was obviously one of the first ones. The uh, so the firmware has been updated from triple zero five to triple zero seven. Uh, program the DCA Pro now. Well, yes. So it looks like it's going to update the firmware for me. Oh, there's two versions here. Uh, this has been uh, stored and downloaded, obviously, on my computer. Uh, interesting to see you've got the both versions there, but we obviously want the DCA Pro 0007. Just do double click on that. And uh, current firmware will be erased, so yes. 
it says programming flash do not switch off that's appearing on the programmer itself we've got a progress bar on here so all pretty foolproof so far I'm not sure if the uh, changes uh, in the firmware are listed anywhere what the improvements have been made programming failed don't panic please reconnect and try again oh well this isn't good is it uh, I'm gonna click on OK at the moment on the uh, DCA 75 it says programming flash do not switch off so that's interesting let's uh, see if we can find uh, let's go to program firmware and let's try programming it again all right this time the meters reset itself uh, and gone into the no component detected mode uh, so what I'm going to do I'm just going to unplug this for a moment and plug it back in again and we'll just go and check the firmware version that's connected now uh, maybe we can't check the firmware let's just test it Okay, so I think that's just checking for a software is up to date in version. Well, that's the program software, but how do I know whether I've got the right firmware? Uh, oh, now we've got to restart the computer. I really don't want to do that because that will mess things up. I'm just going to run the DCA Pro software again. Hopefully, this time it won't say that it needs an update. So yeah, that's probably fine. Um, let's check now for that software. Yeah, software is up to date. Okay, so let's uh, just connect a component which I have got here. I just wanted to show you the software. I'm going to plug in a. Let me see. We have a uh, an IRF 640, I think it is. So I'm just going to connect that, and uh, we'll see what results the software gives us right so that's connected now I think you can press the test on the unit itself or the test on the screen that's interesting it has come up with no component detected I'm just going to make sure we've got good contact on the leads, looks like it's fine. I'm going to press on the test again. No component detected. Now that's weird because I have actually had this before. Uh, when I tested this originally back at the end of December, I did have a component that just would not read whatever I did to it. Um, let me just check this. It is an IRF 640N, so nothing special. Uh, let's just put the leads on a completely different way. It should not make any difference which way the leads are on. Um, right, so that's connected again. Right, so I'm just going to press test on the machine again. No component detected. Oh, well, now it's come up because I've hit test on the PC. Now I don't know whether that's some sort of programming quirk. Let's just, I'm going to press the test button on the unit itself again. And this time it comes up. Well, uh, I, I am at a loss to explain that one, I'm afraid. Well, you can see the information that's, uh, that's coming up here. N channel enhancement mode MOSFET. It's telling you uh, the connections, uh, various parameters that it's tested. We've got a a diagram here 
these look like the specifications that you can expect or the range of measurements um, let's have a look at this what have we got let's click start okay so that's producing a graph Well, it looks like this is uh, testing uh, at different voltages, and uh, yeah, if we look along the top here, it's testing at 3.8, 3.85, 3.87, 3.88, 3.9, uh, and uh, the last one, yeah, 3.9. Uh, no, it's interesting. Don't know whether you can actually. Yeah, it looks like you can adjust these parameters yourself uh, it's obviously working through various tests with var varying voltages I wonder why we had that failure to recognize the device uh, a few minutes ago. That's, uh, that is weird. But I have had it before, except the device was never recognized. It was a voltage regulator, as I mentioned in the other video. I could never get it to be recognized. I might have a, a, a chat with Peak uh, Electronics just about that, because it's not the first time it's happened. This is obviously taking some time to uh, to go through all of these tests. We're about halfway through looking at that. Yeah, so it's just varying the voltages from uh, what have we got? 4.1 to 12, and. Uh, yeah, I mean it's very, uh, very interesting software. I don't know what. Uh, oh, look, we can zoom in and out. I'm just using the uh, laptop's pad with these. I've got to scroll in and out, um, or scroll up and down a bit to the right of the pad, and I can actually uh, use that to zoom in and out of uh, these uh, this graph. So yeah, I'm just going to stop that. I'm not really interested in the results. Just want to show you guys what the uh, software can do um, okay we've got a whole load of other options that we can look at and test just scroll out oh, this looks pretty uh, pretty comprehensive and you can select all of the different uh, graphs here I'm going to connect a voltage regulator now and we'll just use this voltage regulator graph and see what that produces. This is, let's have a look, a L78S09CV, so you know, nothing, uh, nothing special. And let's just connect it up anyway as usual. I'm going to try the test button on the unit. testing and uh, yeah the on-screen display is just mimicking actually yeah I've got to scroll down on the unit 8.210 uh, volts and uh, let's have a look if we can run this test see what this gives us Well, this is a volt out compared to volts in by the looks of it. So, yeah, to achieve the 8 volt out, we need around 8.5 volts in. So, uh, yeah, other interesting reading. I don't know if this is going to give us anything.
yeah well the software is uh, is quite nice I, uh, I'm just going to connect up a diode see what we get uh, through that going to use the units test button again Yeah, diode junction 0.622, which is what we've got on screen. And we'll just retest it with the test button on the screen. Yeah, the computer makes the noise and the uh, the meter actually bleeps as well. So it tells you what's connected where and uh, all the information we, uh, we need. Yeah. No problems there at all, I think. Um, oh, thank God. Uh, somebody's come up with a good idea where you can actually just make this full screen. So many of this type of program is, you know, stuck like that. But actually this one you can uh, scale and in any direction and actually make a full screen. So that's uh, very, <laughs> very nice. It does wind me up when you can't make programs uh, full screen. Uh, now you can actually adjust the contrast of the unit's LCD display. Uh, it looks like you just slide this around and uh, well, that's not doing anything at the moment. Ah, oh, okay, I was going the wrong way. I was assuming brighter would be to the right. Uh, it's actually it's working perfectly. That is a live uh, adjustment so yeah darkest is to the left and it uh, the display progressively lightens until it is invisible at that end so yeah uh, and can you actually see uh, you, you're never going to make the mistake of lightening this up and thinking the unit's dead you, you can just make out the uh, the display just at that uh, that minimum contrast setting uh, but yeah around the mid region seems pretty good uh, so yeah that's it it looks like you can program the latest firmware adjust the contrast check for updates various graphs uh, for the devices uh, you're working on and the help I'm assuming is just yeah it's just a quick version uh, and yes in fact you can check the firmware version number within there so even if it says it fails uh, just you know unplug it uh, reboot it and just check the firmware version in that help section I actually assumed that was going to bring up some sort of help files I didn't bother going into it but yeah actually it tells you the, the firmware version and software version so yeah perfect um, so yeah that's absolutely fine and uh, we'll, uh, we'll catch you later